like here, is only going to be displaying one of these chat messages depending on who sent any given chat. So that's an important thing out of the way. I'm just going to set this back up so that it doesn't look too crazy. And now we're going to be good to go to move on. So to send our messages, we're going to need to define some actions on our little send button so that it creates a chat message document. And then it's going to update the chat document that that message is a part of the chat that we're currently in. We're going to be updating some fields like the last message to display the appropriate last message. We're going to be updating the timestamp. And then we're going to be doing some things. If you remember, we defined a field in our chat document called last message seen by. And we're going to be manipulating that so that we can notify the users when there's a message that they haven't seen in any given chat. So down here on our button, we are going to go into action, open up the action flow editor, and we're going to be defining an action on tap. The first thing that we have to do is go create the actual chat message document. So over here in backend slash database, we're going to go into Firestore, create document, the collection will be chat message because we're creating a chat message document. Now we have to pass in the reference of the chat to which this message will belong to. Again, we have this from the parameter. We're receiving the chat reference on this page, so we can set it to this. Hit confirm. And then we need to set the fields. So I'm just going to click this a couple of times so that we see all of our fields. So the message itself will be coming from, uh, from variable, will be coming from the widget state of our text field. So over here, we can go into widget state and we're going to set it to the value of the text field. Just like that. Oops. For the timestamp, like we did before, we're going to be setting this to global properties, current time. Hit confirm. The UI of the sender in this case will be the, or UID of the sender, sorry which is basically the reference of the sender will be the reference to our authenticated user, just like so, hit confirm. And the name of the sender, we're going to set this to the display name of our authenticated user. Display name. And now we have created our chat message document. Now, another thing we have to do is make some updates to the chat document. So remember the chat document corresponds to the conversation as a whole which holds all of the chat messages within it. So over here, we can click on the plus to add another action. This will be backend slash database, Firestore, and now we are updating a document. The reference of the document we're updating, once again, is the chat that we can go get from the parameter that we're receiving. And then we have to make some changes to the field, so I'm just gonna add them all so we can see them. Just like that. So the user IDs, the list of the user references, we don't have to make any changes to this. This was created appropriately when we create the individual conversations or the individual chats. So I'm going to remove this because we don't have to make changes to this. Now the last message, this is the field that's going to contain the last message sent so that we can display it on the homepage of the user with all of their conversations. So this will need to be updated. So we're going to be setting this to from variable and this is going to be coming from once again, our widget state to the value of the text field. The user names, this is the list of the names of the people involved in this conversation. Again, this was created appropriately uh, when the chat was created. So we don't need to make any changes to this. This is good. The timestamp, we do need to update the timestamp. So we're going to be setting it to from variable. And again, global properties, current time, hit confirm. And then we have to make changes to last message seen by. So this field is essentially a list of users that's going to be keeping track of who in this conversation has seen any given message. So when we're creating a new message, in theory, we're going to be updating it right away after, as you'll see. But as soon as we send the message, technically, no one has seen it. So whoever had seen the previous message that was sent, we should take that value out of the list of people that have seen the messages and clear it because no one has seen the most recent message. So that might sound a bit confusing, but put simply, the list holds the people that have seen the message. So when we create a new message for a brief moment, no one has seen it because it's a brand new message, right? So in this field, we're going to go down here, list update type, and we're going to be just deleting it. This isn't deleting the actual field, but it's deleting any contents that this field currently holds. So we're basically saying, because we're creating a new message in this instance, uh, no one has seen it yet. So we're going to hit delete. 
And that's going to do it for the second action in our action chain. Now we're going to add a third thing over here. So we're going to add an action. And it might seem a bit redundant, but here what we're actually going to do is add back in the authenticated user to the list of last message seen by. Because when I'm sending or when the authenticated user is sending a message, obviously they're the ones that sent it. So we should keep track of the fact that they quote unquote read it. They've seen it, right? So we're going to go in backend database, Firestore, update a document. We are updating our chat document that we're getting the reference from the parameter. And the field we're looking for is the last message seen by. We're not making any other changes right now. And in here, the list update type will be add to set. And we are adding in our authenticated user's reference. Hit confirm. So now at this point, the last message seen by field will hold the authenticated user or the person that has sent this message, the message that we're creating with this whole action chain. Remember that this action chain that we're creating right now is the action that are triggered when someone clicks on the send button, sending a new message. And now the last thing we want to do in this action chain is actually clear the text field of any contents so that our user can start typing a new message without having to delete the thing that they just sent. So over here, we're going to be adding one more action. Bring this down a bit. And I'm going to search for clear. And we have it right here, clear text fields or pin codes. And the text field that we're clearing is our text field one, which is the only one on this page. And with that done, everything should be good to go. And we will now be able to create some messages. So we're going to close this up. And then another place in which we're going to have to add some functionality to keep track of whether or not a user has seen a message is going to be actually on this back button right here. And the reason that we're going to be using this back button to help us keep track of whether or not a user has seen a message is that whenever the user clicks on the back button, that means that they were in this conversation, meaning that they have seen whichever last message was sent, right? So even though it doesn't make intuitive sense necessarily, like why is the action going to be set on this back button? The reason this works is because by clicking the back button, we know that a given user was in this chat conversation until they clicked the back button. So any messages that were sent in this conversation, they have seen. So on this back navigation button over here, we're going to go into the action. Right now, we only have the navigate back action, but we're going to be adding one more thing. So we're going to open up the action flow editor. We're going to be clicking on this plus to add an action. We're going to be making changes to the chat document, which is where the field last message seen by is held. So we're going to go in backend slash database, Firestore, update document. Again, we're making changes to our chat document. So we have that reference right over here. And we're just going to have to look for the field that we want, which is this one. So I'm going to remove all of the other ones. And what we're going to be doing here is adding the authenticated user to this list. We're going to be adding the authenticated user to that set, indicating that they've seen the last message, whatever that last message may be. Keep in mind that this field is on the chat, so the conversation itself, not on the individual messages. So it's not the messages that are keeping track of whether or not someone has seen them. It's the chat itself, the whole conversation is just keeping track of who has seen the last message that was sent. So what we're doing here is we're updating the list and what we're doing is adding in our authenticated user to this list. So we're going to do add the set and we are adding in the reference to our authenticated user confirm. And then I'm just going to move this one above the back navigation just so it makes more sense intuitively. We're updating the document, even though this is one action chain, we're updating the document and then navigating back to our homepage. So now that that's done, we can close this up. And now we've done all this work to keep track of who has seen the last message, but we're not indicating this to the user in any way, shape or form. So there are many ways you could do this, you could make the text on the home page over here, maybe you could make some text bold or something to say that you haven't seen this yet. What I'm going to choose to do is just add a little uh, blue dot if the person has, has a chat in there that they or a message that they haven't seen. But you can feel free to be creative with this and indicate um, that they haven't seen a chat in any way you'd like. So for me, I'm going to go in our row over here, which is holding the timestamp and the icon. And I'm just going to throw in a little container. That looks terrible for now. Uh, put it in front of everything. Whoops, that went inside of it. Put it in front of everything. I will change its color to our nice blue. Change its shape, its shape to a circle. 
and then make it much smaller. Uh, maybe 10. That's a bit big. 10 is okay. And then I'm going to give it some padding on the right. Like that. So again, you can choose to do this or represent the fact that they have an unseen chat in this conversation in any way you'd like. For me, if they haven't seen a message in this chat, there's going to be a little blue uh, container over here or a little blue circle indicating that they have some unseen messages. So now the last thing we have to do is set up the conditional visibility so that this only appears when our authenticated user is not part of the set or not part of the list last message seen by, indicating that they haven't seen a given message in that chat. So on the container, we're going to go over here, enable conditional visibility. We are creating a single condition. We're looking for in our chat document from our list view query. We're dealing with this field over here, last message seen by. We're looking for if the list contains the item, our authenticated user reference. So we're checking if our authenticated user is part of this list, meaning that they've seen the messages. And we're checking if this is equal to false. So again, we're checking if our authenticated user is in the last message seen by list. If they are not, that means that they have an unseen message. So we're going to indicate this little blue circle. And this statement here is going to evaluate the true. So the blue circle is going to be showing. So we're going to hit confirm on this. And with that, everything should be set up. So we're going to jump into a test session. I'm going to start a new session and we're going to check that everything is working well. All right, so our test session is loaded up. As we can see, we have our blue little circles, which we would expect because this is a brand new conversation. So although there aren't any unseen messages in there, it is a new conversation. So it, it makes sense to have the blue little circle there. If I go into this conversation with Michael, we see we have no messages. But now if I go back, you see that blue little circle is not there. So we've seen whatever we had to see in there. And then if I go in this conversation, in here, I'm going to say, hey, Michael. And we saw that our little send button was disabled before, but now it's enabled because we typed something in here. And if I click send, <laughs> we get hello world, hello world, which is not what we expect. I guess if I go back into the chat page, we forgot to actually bind these text fields to the appropriate thing. So we're going to do that really quick. So this text field over here is going to be bound to the chat message document. And we're looking for the actual message. This one down here will be bound again in the chat message document to the timestamp, but we're going to format this to relative so that we get the a moment ago, 20 minutes ago kind of behavior that we want. Hit confirm, and then we're going to do the same thing on this other side. Uh, so this text over here in our message, we're binding this to the message. And the other one over here, we are binding this to the timestamp with the relative, just like that. So now hopefully I didn't forget anything. We'll go check if everything is working properly. So we're going to reload our test session and see what's up. All right, so we're back in here. We see that we don't have any unread things in this in this chat, which we would expect because we're the ones that sent the message. We can actually see the message we sent. Hey, Michael here as the last chat and we see two minutes ago because I sent it about two minutes ago. So now if we go in here, we see our Hey Michael chat appearing as we would expect two minutes ago. I can type in how are you? And again, clearly I did something wrong. I forgot something. We have to go change the ordering of our query over here because this message, since it's more recent, should have shown up at the bottom. We go back here. At least we can see the new message here. So everything's updating a moment ago because we sent a new message. So we're almost there. So we're going to jump back into here. On our list view, we're going to go into our backend query and change the ordering to decreasing. And this should solve our little issue. Go so back into our test mode for the third time. Third time's the charm. Again, we're back in here. We see our last message. All is good. If I go in here, now the new message is appearing on the bottom as we want. We see two minutes ago, four minutes ago. So I'll send one more, assuming Michael would have answered. I'll say I'm good. And hopefully this appears right at the bottom, just like that. So now we see one side of this conversation since we are currently logged in as Justin, I believe. But now let's go log into Michael's account and see 
in theory, we should see the chats up here on the other side, and we're going to be able to answer, in this case, we're going to be acting as Michael, answering Justin, and everything should work well. So if I go back out of here and go log out, and then I think for Michael, it must have been just Michael at Gmail when I made the account. Sign in. And you can disregard this one over here. I had made this one yesterday, but this is the one that we're concerned with. So you see that we have this blue little circle indicating that we have some unread messages in here. And if I click into here, the messages appear on the other side. And if I back out of it, the blue circle has disappeared. So we don't have any unread messages in there. And then I can go in and answer our good friend, Justin. Our message appears on the right side and then just to show everything one last time i'm going to log back in as justin and we have our answer from michael that says hey justin we see our unread message a moment ago if we click in here we see his message come back out and the unread little blue circle disappears so all of that's working well we can always add a new chat. Let's say we want to start chatting with Ashley. We see our conversation with Ath Ashley appear on the top. Now, if we send a new message to Justin, we want to see it go on top, right? Because it's more recent. If I just go I again, and that and go out, we see our conversation with Michael back on top of the one with, with Ashley because now it's more recent. So one last thing I want to point out, if we jump back into our Flutterflow, is that we are developing for mobile, so the user won't have a keyboard and mouse like we do when we're developing. They're going to have their keyboard pop up from the bottom. But with the way that we have it set up, if I click on here to show the keyboard, you'll see that our text field and our send button pop up appropriately so that the user can still see what they're typing with the keyboard out. One last little detail that we're going to want to do on our homepage is format this over here so that if the message happens to be really long, it doesn't make everything clip out and push everything to the side. I'll show you guys an example. So if I remove this for now and I just type some stuff in here and it's way too long, you'll see that it starts pushing everything out and this is going to lead to some behavior that we don't really want in our app. So I'm just going to delete this and undo this so that we can set it back to the last message in our chat document. And then on the text, we're just going to want to scroll down over here and give it a value for the maximum characters allowed in this uh, text widget. So I'm going to set mine to something like 15. And then for the text overflow replacement, instead of clip cutoff, we're just going to put ellipsis. So what this is going to do is basically display the 15 first characters of a message if the message happens to be longer than 15. And at the end, it's just going to put dot, 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 indicating that the message does run on for longer. But we don't want to display the full message because that would lead, like I showed before, to some uh, errors in terms of the way the UI is laid out. So with all that said, that pretty much wraps it up for the actual development of this app. In the next lesson, we're going to be concluding this project and this course, so I will see you guys there.